And welcome into Missouri 8-Man Football. I'm Devin Alberson, joined by Anthony Crane. We tag team this top five matchup in King City, Missouri, between Worth County and King City. Uh, Worth County comes away with a 44-34 win. They scored 22 points uh, consecutive in that game. We get a 10-point win here on the road against the King City team. That was number two coming into this game. Uh, they were a top two team all through the preseason, all up to this point. And my big takeaway from this game is just Worth County, they're pretty good. Their air attack is very good between Rundy and McIntyre in the, in the receiving game. Uh, what were your kind of general thoughts on this game? Well, you know, coming into it, um, and I think we had talked about this, it was, you know, we know about Parker Muff, we know about Alex Reinhardt. It was going to be the other guys, and whose guys were able to step up. Um, and with Reinhardt having that bum ankle in the second half, we saw it was Dylan McIntyre, um, and Aiden Gladstone was fantastic. Yes, he was. Um, <laughs> you know, he threw the one where he stepped out of bounds and still <laughs> didn't even complete it. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, um, you know, we thought Worth County would be good coming into the year. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't really expect it to be this good yep. because, you know, they won by 10. They lost the turnover battle, uh, you know, Reinhardt with three fumbles. Yep. Um, and still, you know, kind of ran away with it in the end. Yeah, for sure. And Worth County, the only thing that stopped their offense today was themselves. You took the fumbles and the end of the first half there with the weird clock situation. Uh, that was the only time they were stopped really all day. Yeah. Um, they even had a fourth and ten there. That late in the game, they had the Gladstone through across the field to McIntyre for the ending touchdown, put up by ten points, and put up the nail in the coffin kind of deal there. And for King City, they were just they're so Parker Muff for line. I think he had he had forty one carries going into the fourth quarter. I think he probably finished the game with close to fifty carries in this game. And we are that reliant on just one player to get. A, he wears down after the game goes on. I mean, he took a lot of hits today versus a really physical Worth County defense. Um, Latham up front, Wilmis, Rundy, and Reinhardt, all those kids are hitting really hard, and he's getting hit by two or three guys each and every play. It takes a toll on your body as a 16, 17, 18 year old kid. Yeah. So for King City, they got to find that second pitch, that little curveball to throw at teams to kind of throw them off that center a little bit. But they're still a good football team. I mean, they're still top <laughs> 16 in the state pretty easily there at this point. It's just we're seeing two losses in our schedule kind of makes it tough. They play. Maybe one of two teams in the state at home in Stanbury and King City. Um, also, other games tonight that we can look at score at. Stanbury defeated Pattonsburg 75-14. Um, East Addison, they defeated Rockport 48-0. North Shelby defeated Knox County 52-14. Oric took down Northwest Hughesville 68-26. Uh, Bishop of Lawn defeats, uh, lost to Archie 28-24 in a really fun game down south. Um, so that was a top 10 matchup so far in this one. What, in this top 10, a lot of games that kind of we talked about it earlier in the week that was like, this can kind of see where teams kind of start playing each other. We can kind of get a better order of the top ten going forward. What are your kind of thoughts after the top ten games this week? Yeah, and I, the fun thing is, is the next few weeks we get these top ten <laughs> matchups. You know, um, we discussed it before this game. Uh, the kind of Worth County won. We're going to Grant, or I'm going to Grant City next week. Um, <laughs> just, you know, see another undefeated matchup. Um, and then, you know, we then get, you know, North Shelby. Um, in Oric, um, that'd be another good one. Yep. Um, because again, North Shelby being way over there in the East, kind of get they kind of get forgotten about. Yep. Yep. Some people um, kind of thought they might get tested this week, and as we've seen, they haven't. Um, they seem to have gotten better. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of like you know what we saw from North County you know, last year, injuries, things like that. They showed flashes. Yeah. Um, this looks like a team that's really grown up. Yeah, for sure. Um, and you know, I can't talk about Aiden Gladstone enough, and the Throws he was making, oh, just yeah, for sure. putting it right on the money, um, and so that last game of the year, um, that's going to be fun. <laughs> yeah, um, sure. but even before that, you know, East Ashton's just destroying people. Yes, uh, that defense is just so good, um, and so then we get Stanberry, um, and East Ashton coming up as well. Um, so <laughs> it's going to be tough to decide where we're going over this final half. Of the well, yeah, for sure. You're talking about with Worth County, they grew up. You look at the senior leadership in this team. You have Reinhardt, Gladstone. Uh, even Dawson Vore, a senior, Rundy's a senior uh, up front, Austin Pride, Dylan Wilmus, they're all seniors there for them. They got a good group of juniors as well, so they have a lot of really good players coming through right now. They're kind of all developing at the right time, kind of for kind of, it's kind of the worst kind of teams in the past. Like, they're big up front, they got some speed, they got some, there's really hard nosed team, and uh, Coach Adwell's done a great job with them this year, kind of get them refocused from last year a little bit and get back to the worst kind of ways a little bit with them. And as you said, there was East Addison. It was 34 0 in the half, but the end of the first quarter versus Rockport. I thought EA was really good going to the game. I wasn't so sure on Rockport yet. EA just kind of 
did what EA does in 275 at this point yeah. with the teams that are over there. We, we won't know much about EA until week eight when they play Sanbury. Yeah, I think they could hang that conference banner now. I would. I would, personally. I mean, they got Flat Valley and Mount City left. That's probably their biggest two conference games left. Yeah. Um, they still get to play Stewartsville Osborne, I believe. Um, so they still got a few games left. But their Stanbury Week 8 game is at a conference, but that's their big game yeah. that we'll see them come up in Week 8. Um, there's another couple of games we mentioned. Next week, the game I'm going to, Drexel Archie. They're, Archie got a hard win today, 28-24. Uh, they did have a kid ejected for a very questionable, from what I saw on Twitter, very questionable call there. Um, he's their best receiver. So if he's out next week versus Drexel, I'm not sure what the protocol for that is. But if he's out next week, that's a big hit to Dr Archie. They need all, all the horses they can get going to that Drexel game because Drexel – Another team, very good defensively. Uh, Jacob Coffey, enough said, Corey Compton, they have a lot of talent over there at, Ar at Drexel as well. Should be a lot of fun uh, next couple of weeks. I think next week I'm going to Archie Drexel. You're going to Wor Worth County. No one's going to North Andrew Stanbury, which is always a really good game. It should be a fun one next week as well. There's so many good games the next few weeks. It makes it hard for us. So if anyone's playing on Saturday for these top games, we would love that. Or Thursday, like we'll go to Thursday or Saturday games, no problem. I know that probably won't happen, but it's a lot of fun uh, going forward here. Uh, a couple other scores that came through, some of the non-top 10 games that would happen. Jasper defeated Liberal 34-6. Lockwood defeated Greenfield 59-0. Uh, Mount City defeated Nottoway Valley 58-14. Platte Valley, a big out-of-conference out of winner versus Albany, 56-38. So a huge win there for Platte Valley. Uh, North Andrews scored 74 points, defeating St. Louis Christian 74-6. St. Paul Lutheran did defeat Keatsville 63-6. South Hope defeated uh, DeKalb 64 to six, and then South Hope Livingston defeated Stewartville Osborne 22 to 12. Yeah. So a lot of interesting games there. Some teams kind of figuring out their order a little bit. Um, and I don't have much else to say. Um, Archie big win, Worth County big win. EA kind of establishing themselves still at the top of that conference. Yeah. Uh, anything you're looking forward to going into next week kind of deal uh, with this? You know, I have to give love to Lockwood. Um, in their yeah. first year at eight man, and they are they hit the ground running. Yep. Um, and, you know, it's great to see teams from the South uh, having success like that. Um, you know, big fan of the South. Uh, <laughs> and we joke, and I know if you guys listen to Anthony's podcast, they give them some crap. We do like the South. We don't. We kind of go to our best game each week, and a lot of it is just proving it to people, not just us, because we, we'll travel to all parts of the state. It's to other people kind of proving to them that the teams down South can play with the teams up North, and they can. St. Paul Lutheran, very good. They got Drexel Week 9. That's going to be a huge game as well that's kind of flying on the radar. There's a lot of good games coming up here. North Shelby, um, you look at Stanbury, their last three, four weeks, they got North Shelby, EA, Worth County. I can't think of a bigger murderer's row going into that. And then once they get out of that, they go to districts where they still have EA and Worth County in their district. So um, district standings will be interesting this week. Um, on the Facebook and the Twitter page, I will post standings for conference, districts, and all that stuff once they're released kind of in the morning as well. Um, so you guys can see all that on Missouri 8 Man Football Facebook and Twitter. Make sure you follow him on Twitter at Crane underscore Anthony, myself at Devin Albertson. And I think I plugged everything. Uh, my podcast, Straight Up Sports, his podcast, the Anthony Crane Podcast, with him and Coach Gavin, the former Pattonsburg coach. Always a fun time. I was listening on the way down here to King City and <laughs> had a few laughs there. They had Coach Jones from Rockport on this past week. Do you know who you're having on for this week? I don't yet. I don't yet. They kind of fly by the seat of their pants, but it's a fun podcast. Let's maybe, do. maybe we can convince Old Man Thacker to uh, do it. Oh, that. there we go. Yeah. Uh, Coach Thacker and also Oric, a team that's kind of flying under the radar. They're 4-0 at this point. Big win over North West Hughesville, who's a solid team. They've had a tough schedule to start as well. Um, and a team adjusting on the fly. Yes. Um, you know. They got Jackson Miller back this week. They really helped their defense out. I think about 52 points to Bramer last week. He yeah. comes back. They only give up 26 to a really explosive Hughesville offense. Yeah, and you know, moving Blake Buchanan to running back. Mm -hmm. um, and... You know, talking to Worth County about that after this game, it's they have to you know stay grounded as uh, Coach Advil said because again you know top five matchup next week. Um, and Orcs given them fits in the past couple of years too. Like it's yeah. been a really good like twenty eight six. Like last year it was fifty four forty four. Like they've been some really good games between Worth yeah. County and Warwick. So I know two years ago they played at Northwest actually because Worth County's field wasn't in a good condition yes, at the time, so they played at Northwest. It, was, so. it wasn't a fun game. It rained, <laughs> and I mean not like tonight. It rained the entire game, but. Uh, you know, back then they caught my eye. Uh, that was really good. You know, it was a good Worth County team. They held them 28 points. Mm -hmm. um, but man, the more, you know, going back to tonight, um, just really blown away by the way that, you know, you talked about old Worth County teams and kind of looking like that. There's that, but also the ability to throw the ball. Um, because Rundy and McIntyre are really good. And I enjoy passing the ball. If you guys follow me on Twitter, you know I enjoy a good pass. So it should be a good time here. Um, I've been kind of thinking here in the broadcast booth, waiting for you to come up from the sideline, from talking to the coaches and stuff. 
of what my top five is going to be this next week, and just kind of wrap my round because a lot of the top five to six teams, they're all built pretty similar. Really good defenses. They can yeah. score explosively on offense. Um, right now, and this is not finalized by any means. I, I got till Sunday night to finalize this, but my early thoughts are Stanbury one, Worth County jumping the two. I got E and Drexel three four, and either that five spots either North Shelby or King City is where I'm kind of looking at that. My top five kind of deal with Warwick right in that seven spot is where I'm kind of looking at my yeah. top seven to kind of deal with. But I think the two three spots really difficult. Two um, three four, I think it's really hard. Worth County, but Drexel, I mean, I, yeah. we love Drexel, we love Coach Steve, but. Yeah. You can't. I mean, <laughs> I'm kidding. I love it. They they have it. You know, EA is. I mean, I guess there's their schedule hasn't been great. No. Um, but neither is Drexel's. Mm -hmm. um, so I can see why you would bump Worth County to two. That being said, it's hard for me, at least in my poll, to put Worth County at two right now, mm -hmm. just because you know EA is done what they're supposed to do and, and then some. destroyed teams <laughs> doing it. Yeah. Um, and I don't want to give Coach Barron's any more fire than uh, he already has. Um, he he's playing the disrespect card. Um, so <laughs> thank you to Scott Kendrick for saying you guys always give the proper amount of love to the South. It is appreciated. We love you, Scott. Like there's at least one person who appreciates what we do for the yeah, South yeah. a little bit. Don't, so. don't get me wrong. Every time I see Athens in the city that loses, my heart breaks a little bit more. <laughs> and they did lose tonight to Rich Hill, uh, yeah, forty-six see. to eight. So, Rich Hill, good, but if they need a win there. They've been struggling the last few weeks. Well, uh, you know who really needed a win it was Apple City. <laughs> um, Rich Hill at least has won. Um, <laughs> Not since week one, though. It's been a while. So, But, hey, but good wins down uh, across the state. Hope everybody stayed healthy tonight. That's the number one thing. Everyone stay healthy. Get ready for week six. We're over halfway through the season now, which is kind of crazy to think. Tonight was like the first glimpse we've had of a fall game kind of deal. It was a little bit of a fall crisp weather out there. It was really nice to see. Is that what you thought sitting in the booth? I thought it was, it was great up here. Hey, the windows were open. I had a little breeze coming in here. It was yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah. I, I could stay out of the rain there the first uh, three minutes of the you game. You know, the worst part is not the rain itself. It's once it really settles and the grass gets wet and now you know, <laughs> shoes are soaked and so. Yeah, we saw you down there with the umbrella on. We were we were following you there on the sidelines. Yeah, yeah, it was impossible. I was trying to keep, you know, keep snacks, take photos, and it's... Yep, so next week, uh, make sure you follow Anthony. He'll be going to Warwick at Worth County. He'll be up in Grand City. I will be down south for Archie at Drexel for the Wemo Conference title. Um, so it should be a, <laughs> really an Archie already beat uh, Jasper. Drexel still has Jasper in a couple of weeks. Um, and, yeah, Southwest Livingston did win 22-12 uh, to 12 over Stewartsville Osborne, their second win of the year. They beat DeKalb a couple of weeks ago. Tough loss there for Stewartsville Osborne. They're trying to get the 500 for the first time in a few years there, a couple wins back-to-back. Close there for Stewart. They've had a lot of issues there this past yeah. year with some injuries and other things going on. So for them to even get game people on the field to get eight guys there is really good for Stewart's football. Well, forward. you know, and that's true. But you know, Southwest and you know they've been to back to back state title games, winning one. Mm -hmm. um, but the way they started the season, it it's nice to see them yeah, have back. some success. A lot of young guys there in Southwest. They have a lot of freshmen and sophomores who didn't play a whole lot last year because they had a lot of seniors in last year's team. So besides O and H and Glenn Holt. A lot of their guys didn't get much playing time last year, so yeah. good to see the younger guys get some wins under the belt during the 275 as well. So uh, that's all we got for you guys this week. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, you want to share this, that way people can kind of see our thoughts for a post game as well. I'll probably try to share this to the Straight Up, show, uh, Straight Up Sports podcast if you guys want to listen to it instead of seeing our beautiful faces. Uh, you guys can do that as well. It's probably a little better for your health that way at least. Mm -hmm. um, so thank you guys for this. Um, and again, work worth getting next week. Archie Drexel, you guys have a good night.